Hey there, my name is Provis, and welcome to more Dune Spice Wars. We are back with more of the battle for Arrakis, and this time around we are playing with the Smugglers faction. Whereas the Atreides are the good guys and the Harkonnen are oppressive, the Smugglers represent the criminal underworld of Arrakis, and they have a pretty unique playstyle in and of their own right. These guys are not really set up to go for any sort of a peaceful diplomatic victory, whether that be with the Lance Rod or whether that be with the Hegemony victory. Instead, they need to be playing as aggressive as possible, leveraging the strength of other factions and using it against them like a leech until we become dominant in our own right. We will do this mostly by installing underworld headquarters in enemy villages and in their main bases once we get to 10k hegemony. These are like some extra buildings that we can place in enemy villages that get us some sort of a benefit or set us up for some good plays. However, the smugglers do come with some major downsides. We don't have any authority penalties when annexing a village that's far away, which means we can go for a quality over quantity approach. However, the cost to annex villages goes up dramatically the more villages you own. That's the case for every faction, but it's way worse worse for the smugglers, which means we're going to have a small core group of territories, and that's reasonably all we're going to go for. Not to say you can't go for a hegemony victory against an AI, but it's really not going to be very practical. Also, you'll note that we're not even on the Lancerod Council with any votes until we get to 5k hegemony, which is why I say the diplomatic victory is going to be hard to do. However, at 10k hegemony, we do get a 50% resource bonus from pillaging villages. If you use your Underworld Headquarters correctly, you can stack up some major resource gains every time you pillage an enemy player, and this can be truly bonkers. As far as counselors, it's not as obvious to me which ones are good. It kind of depends on what victory you're going to be trying to rush for. Staban Tuek isn't bad. He can get some extra Solari production if you fill out all of your Underworld Headquarters slots with some buildings. And this can stack up nicely if you place these correctly. You can get yourself an extra 30, 40, 50 Solari or so per month. Not bad. However, you also get extra extension slots, which delays how long it takes to get that Solari income, but lets you get some extra advantages per village. So... Eh, it's not bad. Then there's Banjo G. Your military units gain stealth whenever there's an operation in the region. Can be good if you're going for a militaristic victory. Also, you get the local gang and back alley doctor extensions, which can give you some doctoring or some early supply in enemy villages. That's not bad. Drisk is interesting. Information levels cannot be lower than one, means that an assassination victory could actually be kind of in the cards early with a character like this. That said, I really don't care much for the ornithopter speed at all. That's not too important for me. And then there's Lingar Butte, which just gives you some water and a couple extensions to make that better. Good if you plan on going for long-distance attacks. Otherwise, not the most useful thing in the world. I'm actually going to go for Staban and Banjer G. I think that these guys are hard to play with, but if I can make it work, this is probably going to be the most powerful combo. All right, and here goes nothing. As usual, we are going to pause the game, grab our Ornithopter, and go explore the nearest spice field. Build a second Ornithopter. We can get ourselves some Scavengers, which is our basic unit. Which can be nice. Um, then there is the Wrecker. These guys are your starting range units. They have chemical weapons, but honestly, I don't think these guys are that great unless you need to shred enemy armor. Far better to go for some snipers who unfortunately have a very high upkeep, but do a load of damage against non-mechanical units. Beyond that, we're going to be playing the game kind of as normal. Let's go ahead and annex our first village as quickly as we can. I'm going to use my Ornithopter to scout around, see if there's anything obviously useful, and then turn that to the Auto Recon. Looks like we're going to have to go around our base in a weird way thanks to these cliffs, but I guess that's okay. And of course, focus fire our targets over here. Not bad. It's actually in range of our siege, which means we get a little bit of extra DPS, which is quite nice. So we need to be very deliberate about our expansion. Spice is non-negotiable. We do have to pick that up first and foremost. But every consecutive village after this needs to be intentional based on what value we think we are going to gain from them. I'm especially looking for things like minerals. I need that for some Plascrete early on. Development and research, we can go for the Criminal Barons, which makes it cheaper to install Underworld Headquarters. Does not reduce the authority cost for every village we take on. So this would normally be the first thing I pick up, but doesn't actually make a ton of sense this time around. Instead, we're going to go for the Composite Materials to get the Plascrete. And I honestly might want to consider going for some of the uh, spying logistics a lot earlier, but I'll explain a bit more about why later. Of course, get that refinery up and a run-in first thing in your village, and we'll get ourselves some militia just in case some of the local villages decide they want to get uppity. So let's go ahead and grab that foot in the door right away. I want to get that extra agent recruitment speed. I could see that being useful. We'll attack this village over here. 
because these guys do have some minerals, and that's my top priority after I get the spice up and running. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and get these guys up and running. Auto recall, good. With this village snagged, of course, the first thing I'll do is get myself that Plascrete factory, because the more Plascrete you have early on, the faster you can expand a lot of your stuff. And now I'm on the hunt looking for my next spice field. There's always one that's like two tiles away from your HQ. It's probably in this general area over here. I just need to find it, because that's going to dictate what direction I want to expand. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to spying logistics. We're gonna go for even faster agent recruitment speed. The reason I'm doing this is I think there's a very strong chance I'm gonna go for at least one assassination this round, if not more than that, and just eliminate players from the map rather than have to com uh, compete with them properly, economically, or diplomatically. That just doesn't sound like fun. Speaking of a first agent, let's of course set that person to Arrakis and start generating a little bit more authority. I may not be able to get very many villages, but I want as many as I can get my hands on. I'm gonna go for a slightly early research hub here just to try and get some slight uh, scientific lead, though I do think going for the extra manpower with the barracks would not be a bad plan, because I'm gonna need a fair bit of manpower. We're planning on going for a lot of pillaging in this particular game, which means more units, more money. I do want this village over here in Kalanim, and weirdly enough, it's not a very attractive village in that there are no resources over here, but I am gonna want it because the former smugglers here means I'll get even more resources when I pillage villages. This is gonna stack up well with my long-term goal. All right, now that we have the spying out of the way, let's continue with our normal focus down here in the green path. I'm gonna work toward things like the native customs. I would also like to go for underground network, which is gonna get me even more of that Solari per headquarters in adjacent regions, which kind of stacks up with my current counselor and effectively doubles that bonus. Plus, we'll be able to start getting some nice uh, buildings inside of our siege when the time comes, but that's still a little ways off. First of the Landsrod Council votes is up. Note, by the way, again, zero votes. I am the only faction on the map who has no sway at all. I have to use my influence for everything. This is a really weird map for me, by the way. I am not finding more spice. There's supposed to be another field somewhere. Maybe it's over here? Oh, that's weird. If so, that's really far from my siege. Huh. What I'm finding instead is an absolute ton of energy sources. I've got three of those. If I wanted to, I could go pretty heavy on the unique buildings and stuff, but I don't see why that would be particularly good for me. I'm not totally sure who I want to set up with with my next spy. I might go to the show and market over here for the extra Solari income. Solari is what I'm going to be using in part to set up some of these underground bases, and we've already found House of Treaties, and I can do that here. So it does cost me a small amount of my authority, plus a little bit of Solari in order to set these things up. I'm going to do that right here and also over here. And with these bases now set up, we can see our current extension options. So these are all the extra building slots that we can do. And there are quite a few of them available to the smugglers. So, for example, would I like to produce 30% of the village's Solari and Plascrete income? Well, it depends on what the village is producing. We could also siphon a little bit of their spice production. Well, that could be kind of good. Or maybe their water, right? So, depending on what my enemy village is currently building up, that changes what I'm going to be placing down here in order to get the best uh, value possible. Weirdly enough, you can also give your host village an extra 20% resource production, which is a little bit weird because it makes them a a lot stronger. In theory, you get a little bit more production out of something like a bootleg market, but they get more value, I believe, so I don't really think this is a good one to go for. Now, here's one of the crazy things. Then you have these military extensions store some of their production up to 500, and what's going to end up happening is it gets stored away so that if you come through here and you pillage this village, whatever you had stored gets added onto your spoils. Stack that up with the 10,000 hegemony where you get a 50% boost and any other pillaging boosts and all of a sudden you can imagine this gets very, very strong. I don't mind the idea of going for the spice production, so I'll go ahead and have that immediately set up. And then is there anything else we want to go for over here? It only cost me 100 solari and a little bit of income, uh, uh, sorry, upkeep. It's really not that bad. Um, we have a couple of special things from one of my counselors, the back alley doctor does regenerate the health and supply of nearby units, which means when we go out here to pillage them, we can resupply at their village. That's kind of fun. Also, whenever we attack them, we can all maybe sabotage their militia so they lose half their health, or we get some scavenger units, which is interesting. 
We can also steal a little bit of their knowledge, their intel. We can get some extra minor house votes whenever there's a bounty resolution, which I haven't touched on yet. Get some Lance Ron standing. Yeah, lots of weird stuff we can do here. I'm going to get the contraband cash over here for sure. And then beyond that, uh, I don't know. They actually changed this. It used to be that you could store up things like Spice and Solari and so on. So when you come through here and you're raided, you could easily get over a thousand Solari. Uh, it was insane. But it seems like that's been reduced a lot now. So just steal their Spice, get some of their fuel and stuff like that. Meh, okay. And then whenever we attack them and we kill their militia, we just get some Solari that way. All right, so I've set up extensions in all of these villages now, and the result being I am now gaining some Solari for every adjacent one that is nearby, which means even though I just spent a fair bit of Solari getting these set up, I've increased my income. And the more that the Atreides continue to expand, let's say over in this direction, or I guess they can't go over here, it's a deep desert, which is unfortunate, but the more they kind of cluster their stuff together, the more value I can get out of this arrangement too. Not a bad idea to go ahead and pillage villages wherever you get a chance, by the way. If I know I'm not going to take this, we might as well make it really expensive so no one else wants to and stuff like that. Also, just enjoy the slight increase in Solari income. Now, in our siege, we have our normal options here for the administrative hall, for the extra authority and such, the manpower, the knowledge. I'm actually going to go for the intelligence agency, which is a different play than I normally would do, but I really do think that I'm going to go heavy on the assassinations. If I don't win the game outright using assassinations, I can at least knock out one or two difficult players while I go for a domination victory against, let's say, the Atreides. So, yeah, I, I think that's going to be the best option for me. The faster we get spies, the more I can get ready for that. And by the way, this is where you can imagine having the extra water production early on can be pretty good. Already, if I wanted to, I could try going for some aggressive raids against House Atreides and start stealing a lot of extra stuff based on these headquarters. But I don't have enough water to do that safely, so it's not a very good option right now. That is, however, why I'm trying to rush toward the filtration systems to start getting some extra water. Okay, I did find my extra spice field, and it's over here at Cher, and... Right, so if I want to get a second spice field, I have to go down this direction. Alright, I guess that settles that. Now, here's one additional kind of weird tech that can help the smugglers a little bit. Ignore the cost penalty when annexing a pillaged village. What that means is normally when you pillage a village, um, it does take a, uh, a kind of a huge penalty, like a 200 or 300% increase in cost, I don't remember which, in order to actually annex them. However, what it means is we can come here, pillage a village, raise it to the ground, and then capture it, and that's fine. You do have to wait a little bit of time in between, though, which is not great. All right, now that I'm going to have level 1 intelligence in all of these categories, it's time to start spying on some of the other players and getting some infiltration cells set up. Okay, we've reached 5,000 hegemony. That means that now I can place bounties on resolutions when they come up, and I finally have at least a handful of votes. I get some representation! Yay! I haven't even found the other players aside from Atreides. I don't even know where to do an assassination if I could. Blech. Now, one thing that is unfortunate about the smugglers is they do not ever get spice silos. So normally I would place one here in Dam Dak, next to two spice fields so I can get an extra boost in my spice production. Instead, we get a totally different building, which, if I can find a good spot, I'll show you. The Trafficking Station. What it does is if you place it next to an opponent, right? So let's say we have a neighbor next to us who produces spice. We place ours up over here. It reduces their spice production by 20% and 80% of their spice production I get as Solari. So again, a very effective way of leeching off of your opponents. If I took this province over here, for example, that becomes a very attractive option. I suppose technically we could try to go for a Choem victory in this particular game because in theory, once I start really ramping up my pillaging, um, we should be able to make an absurd amount of Solari. That said, I don't know, I feel like the Choem market victory type is just really hard to pull off under any circumstance. Anyway, we haven't talked about bounties yet. This is something I might want to do. Let's suppose we want to set a bounty. Uh, all other factions will be granted 20 Solari per vote on the target choice. Suppose I want to say, hey, um... House, uh, I don't know, Carino, I want you to suffer your spice, and I can encourage other players to say, yeah, you know what, we will vote against House Carino. Speaking of Carino, looks like he and the Atreides are getting into a bit of a kerfuffle and they're out of supply. Fool, you've just lost all these units. I don't care if the Atreides run away, you'll still lose. Dingus. Funny thing is, <laughs> because of my scavenger caches, they just gave me a ton of money. Thank you. Honestly, I've got enough water production. Now might be a decent time to go ahead and make our first push against House Atreides. We'll pillage a few villages along the way, but I do have, uh, let's see, that 30% booster right over here. So, 
Yeah, now's a good time. All I wish I had was 10,000 hegemony so I could enjoy the full 50% extra bonus. On the plus side, what this does also do for me, though, is um, by raiding these villages nearby, kind of cuts off some of Atreides' uh, personal expansion options. It, again, it's very difficult to take a village that has been raided. Yeah, let's go ahead and try to attack these guys. I'll let my temporary lance rod units get in here first. Never mind, they all just disappeared. You know what's really important? Not letting your snipers be in the front. These guys are... So unbearably squishy. It does not take much for these guys to get crushed if anyone gets to the back line. Ah, crap. Sandworm, sandworm, move, 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 move. Yeah, everyone had the same idea, even a tree. It's like, hold on, time out, time out, time out, run away. Honestly, this was a slight miscalculation. They actually held off a lot better than I expected them to. All right, run away with the snipers then. These guys are valuable enough. I don't feel like losing them. Ooh, the free company. Okay, this is the next unit I can get that actually is pretty darn good for us. Gain up to 100% extra power depending on the fighting target's missing life. The more injured they are, the more powerful I become. These become really expensive, but very strong frontline units, so my snipers can do a ton of damage in the back line. I'm gonna go ahead and try to take out these renegades and such, by the way, which is a little bit risky, but I really can't have these guys sitting on my doorstep. They're gonna keep sending militia to keep raiding me again and again and again, and uh, by getting rid of them, we actually should get some uh, pretty strong gratitude from the Spacing Guild, which might get me ships in the future, who knows. Oh, crap, I didn't even notice the Atreides attack me over here. Oh, for God's sake. Right, okay. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. You guys thought you had me cornered, didn't you? But you did not. Uh, we can also try using things like Scavenger Team here. This is another way of getting some serious money. Yeah, uh, this would give me some extra power for any dying military units. We could use that here and probably get a good chunk of money, or we could save this for resources bonuses when pillaging a village. And since we're over 10k, I mean, yeah, that's pretty good. By the way, now that we're over 10,000, something else we can do is go to places like Arakin over here and set up some special extensions directly in their main base. Some of which are not bad, so we get extra spice for every active spice harvester they have. That's solid. Or we get more resources specifically when pillaging them, so we fatten them like cattle and then kill them all. Okay, sure, that's fine. Or Solari production for the highest level completed district building. They haven't finished one yet, so that doesn't matter. Or eliminate all armor on the base if we attack it during a siege, right? These sorts of things can be really powerful depending on what you want to go for. Do I want to farm these guys out for resources or do I want to go for a domination victory? They've got three active spice harvesters. I don't mind getting some spice traffickers up and running, sure. Well, since the Atreides decided to mess with me, I'm gonna go ahead and mess with them. Let's start pillaging all their crap. How much money do we think we can get out of these guys? 1.5 thousand spice and 1.2 thousand solari. Oh my god, that is insane. And that's without me even using the scavenger team for an extra 20% bonus. And pillaging is fast too. Oh, beautiful, beautiful money. Another 1.3 thousand solari from just taking this little village over here. Of course, they're drawing all the sandworms. They keep dogging after me, but that's fine. Oh, good, and House Carino just set up right over here. In a place I actually was totally planning on taking for myself. Well, you know what? It's fine. This is hilarious, because all you guys have done is set it up in such a way where it's actually really easy for me to keep sending assassins over here to go for assassination missions. So thanks for that, dum-dums. And by the way, over here... Ah, there's a sandstorm in the way. It's gonna say we can do the trafficking, because the Harkonnens have set up some spice. Another 1.6 thousand spice from doing this. Good lord, I don't even have to mine spice anymore in the game. All I have to do is just keep raiding the Atreides, and that's just one faction out of several I can start raiding. Good god! In case you're wondering how I'm working toward my victory condition, by the way, I'm currently working toward spying mastery so I can get five more agents once I have five more agents. It'll become a lot easier for me to go ahead and finish this out. Actually, one thing we could do if I want, forget the Harkonnen for a minute. Let's set up one more of those infiltration cells. How about over here? Doesn't really matter at the end of the day. And then we can go ahead and start working toward that level three. Once I have level three with the intel for the Carino, we can start working toward an assassination. And for the record, I'm, I'm sitting on a lot of authority. I really could just start taking some more territory if I want to. I, I, there's, there's nothing I need to take though. That's the thing. It would be probably better for me to just literally set down more underground headquarters in every single village I can find. And would anything help me assassinate the Carino? Yeah, the Whisperer's Hub raised information level as if one more agent was assigned. Uh, I guess. I mean, I've already got three being assigned. I don't know if it'll actually treat it like four, but if that helps the information level rise really quickly, then that's great. Oh my gosh, I'm capped out on spice. 
3,000 spice. I literally can't have more than this. <laughs> Woo, the Atreides are trying to kill me. Well, that's an unexpected turn of events. All right, we need to do some counterintelligence and we need to find their infiltration cells and get rid of them quickly. So let's see, we need to do some missions here. It's called cell search. Doesn't cost me an absolute ton, just a couple hundred solari or so. We've got to use that on all these zones and try to figure out where they might have set that up. Could be just about anywhere, to be honest. So let's see, we'll start with a cell search, I guess. I actually kind of feel like it could be up here. Let's give it a go. Um, investigate. We can send a military unit to investigate the village. If there is anything there, we'll get rid of it. Actually, yeah, it says we found an infiltration cell. So it turns out my gut was right on. The question is, how many more do they have? Probably at least two. So we gotta keep going with more of these cell searches and see if we can find the rest of them. They are slowing down in their progression factor. If we get rid of the infiltration cells, they won't be able to send an assassin over here. And if they can't send an assassin to get this back up to 100%, this will eventually grind to a halt. So here we go, we're gonna start searching here and we should be able to get rid of this. We do another cell search, let's say here. Um, it looks like maybe we did actually find another one. Good lord, my guess is just this on point. And now my own assassination is available. This is becoming kind of funny, actually. It's gonna turn into a game of, well, kind of like Game of Thrones, actually. Just lots of daggers in the dark. And the assassination mission is canceled because I did get rid of both their infiltration cells. Well, hilarious. Holy crud, House Carino has mobilized a lot of troops of their own. Looks like they're trying to take some stuff from the Harkonnen. That's not quite what I had in mind, um, but you know what? Fine, distract yourself while I kill you. Let's begin that assassination mission on House Carino. There we go, all right. So we'll see how long it takes for them to detect me, but as long as I can continue getting what I need over here, we're fine. Uh, actually, now would be a great time to go kill Carino's forces. Small issue with that is they did force a truce on Make me, but I kind of time. don't care. And if I can kill off their army, it's not like they're gonna have a lot of troops available to go and find my infiltration cells. So while they're all killing each other over here, this is a great opportunity. Yeah, it's a bit mean-spirited, but I'm okay with that. I'm a smuggler after all. Die, die, die. Every single one of you gets to die. <laughs> ah, sandworm run! So Karina just lost that entire army and the rest have no supply and they are also dead. And I got paid a lot of money for that too. <laughs> oh, okay, so the Carino have detected me, which means they are now starting to work against me. That's why we have the assassins. The real question is, are they going to be able to find the infiltration cells? My gut tells me they could probably find one or two of them. If they do, that slows me down because that means less agents are able to even be assigned to this mission in the first place. So this is kind of the do or die moment here if assassination is going to have a chance at working. I really, really, really need to get lucky and they don't detect the dang cells. What might help is if I can draw some of their military units out and kill them before they have a chance at uh, actually investigating an area. So even if they use the cell search, maybe it's not enough and they find that they are unable to actually find my assassin. There we go, use that assassin. That brings me back up to 100%. What if I, like, raid this or something and try to... Why am I losing so much health? Oh, right, from all the militia I just antagonized. Right, that would make some sense. Um, <laughs> what I was gonna say is, maybe I can pillage these guys and get some supply nice and high and then literally just camp on this. I mean, if I have a strong enough army, what can they do, right? N nothing. Th they won't be able to do a dang thing. What I can do is set up a back alley doctor. There we go, regenerate our health and our supply. Oh, then I really can just sit here indefinitely. Ah, uh, but they're attacking me over here too. Well, you know what? That's just a spiteful attack. You have nothing to back this up and I know it. Yeah, see, I'm regenerating my health. This is hilarious. Okay, dude, this is the perfect solution. I can't believe I didn't think of this sooner. I literally can just camp here. He can trickle as many units over here as he wants. It won't do a dang thing. Oh, frick me, but it looks like the Atreides and the Carino are gonna attack me at the same time over here. Well, this is just awkward, isn't it? Look, it's fine. As much as this sucks, I would rather lose one village over here than uh, fail this assassination attempt because that cost me so much intel. Actually, where are they going? They're not going over here? Where are you guys going? What are you doing? This is stupid. You're just gonna waste a whole load of supply, you fools. I am so confused as to what these guys are doing. They're going for my spice way over here. Way over here? Really? Okay, okay, if you're sure. I mean, I guess if you guys want it this badly, like go for it, question mark? But you all are out of supply. They'll be able to handle it for a little while. 
But also, House Carino is about to go boom. There they go, bye! <laughs> Which means I can now run up over here and then take a quick little shuttle stop and I'll just kill you all anyway. What were you thinking? Surprise, fools! The murderous pirates are here! You're all very dead. <sighs> bye. It feels like at this point, the only thing that I have to worry about is just getting myself up to um, level three intel with these factions. That's it, and I've actually got enough intel now that I can do both of these simultaneously if I want to, and we've already learned, as long as you got back alley doctors giving you supply and health, and you just camp the infiltration cell, there's not a thing they can do. This is ridiculously OP, actually. They're also in the negative in water. They've got no supply generation. All their units are screwed. Harkonnen, what have you done? That's level three. Begin the assassination attempt. Oh, the Harkonnen are getting close to a hegemony victory, are they? Yeah, I, I don't believe you. I don't believe you for a second. Begin the assassination attempt, and there we go. Now we literally just sit back and wait in relative comfort because this is an unbelievably overpowered combo. Imagine this happening in multiplayer. Do you know how freaking tilted I would be if someone did this to me? I'm like, I know where your infiltration center is. I see your army guarding it, and they're all perfectly fine and healthy with full supply, and I can't stop them. That would be so frustrating. Although, you know, one way this could get completely screwed over, the Atreides are going for the governorship, you know, as they do. And they have, my gosh, so much influence. Right. Uh, um, hey, question, Atreides. I don't know if you're stupid enough to do this. I would like to buy some of that influence of yours, and I'll give you a lot of money. Like, a lot of money. Just give me all that precious influence so I can vote you down in the governorship, you fool. There we go, that's another 50 votes against you. <laughs> Alright, as long as the minor houses do what I hope they're gonna do, we're fine. What would be amazing is if the Atreides actually do get it, and I have 30 days to kill them. Because that would not be, um, a lot of time. But I'm gonna go ahead and take a few steps just in case. For example, let's get those hidden explosives placed, and if I have to go for a very sudden, unexpected domination victory, we will do that. Ha ha, they got declined. Suck it, Atreides. And they detected me. It's fine. Guess how much I care. Answer, not, not at all. Not even a little bit. I'm just sitting here, literally waiting to just kill you. Atreides is doing it again, by the way. They're sending their troops all the way to this side of the map. That's, that, this, this seems like a bug to me. I don't know about anybody else. It seems like a silly thing that the AI is doing. I know I have 500 authority, by the way. I'm not going for a gosh dang hegemony victory again. I'm sick of doing it. Ha 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 you idiots! I just watched them place down a decoy thumper over here, right? To make it super hazardous to walk through here and draw on a sandworm. And then what did they do? They walked into their own thumper and got et! Amazing! Alright, so now I'm taking a little bit of a risk. We are close to finishing off the Harkonnen. Um, but I feel like we could probably finish off the Atreides even faster if we just freaking go for it right now. And I don't want to risk them doing anything stupid. So, like, yeah. Um, is there anything else I could build here that would be more beneficial at this stage? Probably just the army and uh, armor in general. That could be good. So, honestly, I say let's just go for it. Um, we need to split some of you guys up a little bit, though. And other than that, go. And we're going to go ahead and use the defense sabotage so you do a lot less damage. And we sabotage your armor, which means my army of snipers should be obliterating you right now. The only risk I'm taking is that while I'm distracted, the Harkonnen come through here, and then they get rid of the infiltration cell. But I don't think they're going to do that. Of course there's a freaking sandworm right on top of all of my snipers. Oh my god. Uh... Right. Well, that slightly changes things a bit. I have to wait. Go away, you stupid worm! Seriously, go away, please. And yes, the Atreides are trying to murder me back. All right, it's all fair play. I know how this works. I played this game before. There we go. Now we're sniping him into oblivion. Go, go, go! And the Harkonnen are down. All right, so it turns out this wasn't... Faster, exactly? But it's still plenty fast. And down you go. Finally, good lord. You fall! Good lord. In terms of units killed, I am the undisputed master. Of course, the Harkonnen a close second. That's not too surprising. Developments actually ended up being pretty darn good. We were not too far ahead in terms of knowledge. Economy would have sucked pretty terribly, actually. For some reason, my Solari income is in the trash. I'm not too sure how that happened, but I'm not worried about it. Territory worked out fine. Politics, of course, the Atreides won that. Military-wise, yeah, the Harkonnen were almost a threat, almost, but then I obliterated them and it became irrelevant, didn't it? So, finally, a victory that is not a gosh dang hegemony. 
Hooray! Well, that's a look at the Smugglers and Dune Spice Wars. Honestly, I think they're a very fun faction. Probably one of the most enjoyable of the bunch. Right up there with the Harkonnen and House Carino. Uh, the fact that you can place down all of those little underground headquarters really can make a pretty big difference, especially if you set them up correctly. We've already found that they become unbelievably overpowered when it comes to raiding massive amounts of Spice and Solari. And then set up correctly with the right counselors and the doctors, gosh, what are they supposed to do about an infiltration mission? aside from put together an army bigger than me. So if you go heavy in the military and in the spying route, you become an unbeatable force as the smugglers. Really fun, extremely frustrating in multiplayer, I have no doubt. Thank you all for watching, hope you enjoyed. If so, I'd ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, make sure you hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.